Hello friends, welcome back to Radiology Short Cases. Today we have a 5 year old child with history of road traffic accident. Patient had swelling in the elbow region on the right side. Therefore, radiographs of the elbow were performed. So this is the first radiograph, lateral radiograph of the elbow. So what we see here, we can see there is a lucency here and slight displacement of the fracture line. So there is supracondylar fracture in the distal humerus, which is the weakest point in the humerus and commonly seen in pediatric population. So slightly displaced fracture with presence of posterior fat pad sign normally which is not seen and there is elevation of anterior fat pad. Anterior fat pad sign is also known as sail sign. So these two are indicative of joint effusion. This is the AP radiograph where we can see again mildly displaced fracture of the distal humerus. However, the rest of the bones show normal alignment. There is some soft tissue swelling as well as medially. This diagram is to show you anterior humeral line. Anterior humeral line should intersect uh, middle third of the capitulum. It is drawn from the anterior cortex of the distal humerus. When it doesn't intersect the capitulum, this means there is supracondylar fracture, particularly extension type. So, based on these findings, the diagnosis of right supracondylar fracture of the humerus with small joint effusion slash hemarthrosis was given. Now, supracondylar fractures are commonly of two types. One is flexion type and extension type. What we see is normally extension type supracondylar fracture. They are seen in 98% of the pediatric population in which the distal fragment is displaced posteriorly because the mechanism of injury is fall on hyperextended elbow. Now what to report whenever you see supracondylar fracture? First we need to assess the fracture. Where is it located? Then presence of articular involvement. Is there any angulation present that you can detect by the anterior humeral line which we have discussed already? Then presence of joint effusion by uh, indirect signs are anterior and posterior fat pad signs. Then alignment of the radiocapitular joint. Now Gartland classification is given to characterize extension type of supracondylar fracture for the management purpose. So type 1 is undisplaced fracture as shown in this diagram. Type 2 is displaced with intact posterior cortex. So in these two, normally conservative management with cast and reduction can be done. Completely displaced fracture is type 3. So either there is posterior medial displacement or posterior lateral displacement. And type 4 is when there is some rotational element and there is complete uh, displacement of the fracture with periosteal disruption. So in type 4 fractures normally surgical management is needed. So this is how the Gartland classification helps us in management of the patient. Thank you for watching.